Hi everybody and welcome to the update from the ANU Medical School from today, the 6th of November 2020. Now remember the restrictions for travel from Victoria stay in place. The current LGAs in Sydney, the high risk are Camden and Liverpool, but please check the New South Wales COVID-19 website as well because there are some hotspots in Sydney as well. Travellers from those areas, remember um, you should not be on placements on hospital grounds working clinically for two weeks and uh, if that's the case for you, please let us know. Remember to uh, get checked by your GP or get tested if you have any symptoms and regular check the ACT COVID-19 or the ANU websites. If you are a student and you're planning to travel overseas during the holidays, whether that is for a holiday or whether that is to go and see your family, please be reminded that you may not be able to return to Australia in time for the next semester. So we strongly discourage any international travel by our students. All students will need to be in Canberra at the beginning of the semester ready to go. So that means the isolation period needs to be taken into account if you make travel plans. Please see the Department of Home Affairs website for the exemptions, um, which does not include any students, particularly medical students. However, the commission, commissioner may consider approving an exemption of students who are in their final year of study of a medical degree if they have a guaranteed hospital place. However, the exemption is not guaranteed. Please check the Home Affairs website. An update on the budget. Um, I had previously spoken about the budget of ANU. Um, it looks like we are about 103 or 104 million dollars short for the next three years um, and that will definitely be the case for the college as well. The college, the four schools and the college have put their budget together. We have been given a target to achieve. We haven't quite achieved that. We're still about three million dollars short for next year um, and there will be some plans to address this shortfall so that hopefully um, within the next year we'll be okay. The school itself is not that much short, we're about $500,000 or so above the allocated budget. So well done, everybody. Transform is also an uh, important topic uh, this day, these days for everybody. Uh, you may be aware that the Transform team have, have put a white paper um, to the senior management group. The white paper really outlines the strategy and the next steps for the vision of the college. From the SMG, it will then go, go to a new council early in December. If you would like to know more about Transform or interested um, what the green paper, the shorter description looks like, please have a look on the intranet. Um, it is available on the college site there. And just a reminder for those of you who like to store data and take it with you. Um, just like Dropbox and iCloud, OneDrive has been available to ANU staff and students for quite a while now. Um, you are allowed one terabyte of storage space. This can be upgraded to five terabytes. And OneDrive allows you access to your files online and offline from almost any device. Um, and you can seamlessly and securely collaborate with others, whether it's within ANU or outside. And as I said, it's available to all students and staff. There's more information on the ANU website on that. For our students, as it was uh, over the last few weeks, the topic of the month are exams, exams, exams. Year four students will not have a regular print term this year, but if there are some of you who would like to get more experience in clinical placements, please contact us and we will uh, try to facilitate that on a case-by-case -case basis. As I already said, for the year three students going into four year, please avoid any international travel. Year four students, there will be no graduation by ANU this year. ANU has decided to hold an interactive multi-location hybrid live graduation after Australia Day next year uh, in multiple places where you can attend either by Zoom or in person. But of course, important for our Year 4 students, the graduation ball is uh, happening this year and the Medical Student Society is planning that at the moment and there'll be more information on this or invitations going out soon. The ball will be limited to um, less people than we usually have, so it will be per invitation list and most of us won't be able to bring our partners. But I think it is still an important occasion to celebrate our graduates and future doctors. So watch this space. 
The Medical Schools Outcomes Database, or MSOD, is a national survey done on graduating students about their experience, future and career, and how we can work together to make it better um, that there are improved career pathways for medical graduates. The data informs policies and decision making on medical education and health workforce planning and I would urge all Year 4 students to please fill in the survey. It is available on the Year 4 Wattle site and takes about 10 minutes to complete. So in the spotlight this week on our website is Associate Professor Sanjaya Senanayaki, whom I have mentioned previously lots of times about his appearance in social media. And you can learn more about him, um, the man behind the media storm. Sanjaya is an infectious disease specialist at Canberra Health Services and he's the COVID-19 lead in the Division of Medicine, giving clinical and infection control advice to Canberra Hospital and the Territory. And this is how powerful social media are. We think that Sanjaya has reached more than 75 million people in the last seven months. Please um, read more about him on our website. And here are some more sad but I'm sure for the person happy news. Sue Lang Davis, whom you all know, um, is leaving the medical school. Sue Lang started with the Canberra Clinical School in 1998 when we were still part of the University of Sydney. She's held multiple positions since she's worked with us and she's now in the medical education unit. Uh, Sue Lang is well known for her great sense of humour, she's got a can-do attitude and she's got a wonderful willingness to help. Uh, we will farewell Suling in person at the end of the year celebration. There'll be a celebration um, by the staff for Suling. We're very sad to see you go, Suling. We hope that you keep in touch um, and wish you all the best for your future. And here's some great news in regards to awards. Dr. Emily Hesler, who's a senior lecturer here with us at the medical school, was awarded as the 23rd Australian Fellow of the Wounds Australia Fellowship. This award recognises significant service and leadership in research or education to those who have made a significant contribution to wound management in Australia. Congratulations, Emily. We're very proud of you and well deserved. And congratulations also go to Dr. Brett Schultz, who's a senior lecturer with us at the ANU Medical School and well known to many of the Year 1 students as the Year Coordinator. Brett was awarded the Research Evaluation Award in the ACT Mental Health 2020 Awards. Congratulations, Brett. We're very proud of you. Well deserved. And we'd like to see more from you. In the media this week, we had Professor Peter Collignor in Sky News and 3AW, Dr. Amita Bansal in Her Canberra, and Professor Chris Nolan also in Her Canberra and Win News. And you may remember that a few weeks ago, the Medical Deans of Australia and New Zealand held a webinar on action on medical student health and national framework. This is now available to view um, on Basecamp. We will send the link out in the newsletter next week as well. So that's all from me for this fortnight. Thank you for watching. Please make sure you look after yourself, look after your friends and family and your loved ones, maintain your physical distancing, and I will see you on this channel in two weeks' time. Have a great weekend and bye-bye.